If you're not losing weight at the beginning of a dieting phase to include contest prep, maybe I can help you out a little bit or, or help you make sense of it. So stick around. So you're not losing weight even though you just started your diet. Um, before we get into that, everything I'm about to discuss, we're going to assume that you are actually in a caloric deficit, meaning that you are taking in less calories than you are burning. In order to do that, you pretty much need to know what your caloric maintenance is, and that does not mean the amount of calories you're eating. It means the amount of calories you are eating while maintaining weight. That's the definition of uh, maintenance calories. The amount of calories consumed on a daily basis to maintain weight. So let's assume you started your diet based on about 500 calories less than your caloric maintenance, which would equate to about a one pound loss per week, on average, generally speaking. It's really not that uncommon for somebody to not lose weight or maybe even increase weight a little bit the first couple of weeks. And I know that can be pretty frustrating because there are a lot of people who can start losing weight right off the bat. Now, let me be clear, I am talking about scale weight. Okay, I'm not talking about body fat. We'll get into that in a few minutes. But we're talking about the weight you see on the scale whenever you weigh yourself in the Marines. Okay, so when to start off, you need to understand that when you go from a um, when you go from maintenance calories or surplus calories into a deficit, that's a lot of physiological stress on the body. I mean, you're starting off your dieting phase in a stressful situation right off the bat, even though you may not be mentally stressed. There's still stress involved. And with that stress, we can have some cortisol spikes, which can lead to a little bit of water retention. That right there alone can camouflage your, your weight loss, at least on a scale. The second thing to look at is, and this is especially true to people who have a lot of muscle, it may take a while to get through a lot of the excess glycogen you have floating around your body, in particular in your muscles. And keep in mind that glycogen, which comes from carbohydrates, glycogen is two-thirds of water, okay? Glycogen is two-thirds water. You take that in combination with going from a maintenance or surplus calorie situation to a deficit, the stress that that causes, there are two factors right there that can camouflage the weight loss on the scale. And there's a couple of ways you can look at that, right? Number one, we're getting less calories, okay? which means less glycogen, which means you're going to excre excrete more water, which means your body's going to have less water in it. You may be a little bit dehydrated, okay? When we get dehydrated, our body will start to retain water. Here we go again with the water retention. And then let's also go ahead and talk about your workout program. Now, a lot of people will change their workouts when they go to a dieting phase of some sort, whether it's just tr traditional dieting or possibly contest prep. Then that's fine. I mean, generally speaking, if, if the goal is to preserve muscle, you want to do the same things in a building phase when it comes to your workouts that you do in a dieting phase. What builds muscle in a surplus protects it in a dieting phase. But if you do change your workouts when you go into a dieting phase, you may experience some DOMS some delayed onset muscle soreness. That's not uncommon anytime you change a type of workout program, okay? And with that DOMS comes, again, water retention. So we've already talked about four or five things right off the bat that can cause some sort of water retention situation and that can affect scale weight. And for these people, it could take two, three, four, maybe even five weeks for you to start seeing weight loss. But when it happens, you're probably going to see a pretty big drop. I mean, it's not uncommon for us to see people in contest prep and, and even people in just regular general health and fitness be in this situation and then lose two to four, maybe even five pounds over a two, two or three day period, those big drops. 
that doesn't mean all of a sudden they lose a whole bunch of body fat right off the bat. No, body fat has been coming off. It's just that now that the water has been released from the body, you're seeing the benefits on the scale. And after those two to three days of big drops, then the body starts kind of leveling off into a normal downward trend of weight loss. If you are truly in a deficit, which means you are burning more calories than you take in, you're going to lose body fat. It's going to happen. The law of thermodynamics applies to everyone. So you just kind of give it a little time. And if maybe two or three weeks go by and then you don't see any movement on the scale, maybe you need to decrease your calories a little bit further or increase your cardio. And you may start to see some activity on the scale. But the bottom line is, don't panic. Don't go into a knee-jerk reaction to think, oh, this is not working. I'm not going to be able to lose weight. But also, don't go into further drastic cuts in your calories or increase your cardio a whole bunch more. That's just going to push metabolic adaptation faster. And that's the last thing we want. So be patient. Give it some time to work. If it does in a few weeks, make a few small adjustments and you'll stick and you'll see your progress start to happen. So I hope this helped a few of you out. If it did, be sure to like and subscribe and come back often. I'm going to be putting a lot more of these type of videos up here in the near future.